Cable Tech 23. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode Life of a Cable Technician. Folks, we are ready to roll this morning. I'm up pretty early. I'm um, ready to get these jobs in. They hit me with the two eight o'clocks, man. So uh, we definitely gonna be having a busy schedule today. Uh, got one service change and another install at eight o'clock, followed by a couple of trouble. If you're just tuning into the channel, to all my new viewers, please make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button. So let's get to it. I see you guys at my first job. job of the day folks we are here made it to our first appointment uh yeah so we're having a bit of a trouble call here customer is uh saying that she don't have any pictures on the box i'm gonna go ahead since i'm out here go ahead and run these tests i'm gonna have a ground block right now but i'm gonna go climb that pole and see what kind of signal we get all that good stuff all right so uh yeah stay tuned safety first safety first safety cones is out all right folks we are up here at the tap, safely strapped as always. Uh, I gotta do a little search in here for my line, but uh, I know I'm gonna get it. Uh, so I'll let you guys know what I get as far as uh, signal goes. All right, YouTube just finished um, climbing the pole. So signal level's pretty good here. My upstream was at uh, 37, 37.5. Uh, downstream was coming in at 12.5, 13 dBs. So uh, yeah, man, we got pretty good signal here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the doxes here at the ground block. And uh, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see what's going on with this cable box. I'm gonna figure that out. So uh, stay tuned, so folks. We got that job completed. I wanna apologize right now. Sorry I wasn't able to show much footage of this job here. Um, but you know it is what it is when you have two eight o'clocks you know you just gotta be on the roll you know what i'm saying so um but we got that job done so apparently there's something that's been going on with the uh, mocha system that i didn't know about um till today maybe you guys have known of it or heard of it um but usually when we go inside of the modem and what i mean going inside the modem is when you you know you sign into your wi-fi network and then you put in the ip address that will take you inside of the mocha. It's always important when we do wireless to turn that mocha system on. Um, but I didn't know that recently, I didn't know until today that that was also the case with wired boxes. Uh, this customer, all she had was an XG2 and a uh, XB6. And when I got there, it was reading failing. And I didn't know how it was failing, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Cause the signal was good from the CPE wall plate to the ground block, all the way to the tap, everything was golden. You know what I'm saying? A good signal throughout. So I noticed when I go into the Tech360, that's the app us Comcast users use, uh, I noticed that the modem was saying Mocha is disabled. And when I click on the box on the Tech360, it was saying impaired mocha. Uh, uh, it was like, it's saying it was active on its own splitter, which I know it wasn't the case because they're both was on the same oh, splitter. I just decided to go in the system and just turn the mocha on. I knew it wasn't a wireless system, but I decided to do it. And when I did that, voila, everything's passing. Everything was paired. Uh, this is certainly the case now. So whenever you're hooking in any X1 devices, um, it's always important to have that mocha setting on. Uh, that way you don't have any impairment issues. We are on our way to our next job, which is a new install. Uh, hopefully I can get some good footage there. Let's get it. Okay, folks, second job of the day. Here at the new install. So this customer is basically getting her own modem install with the XI6. Okay, so I'm here at the ground block. Um, there's only two drops here. Um, so... I'm gonna have to do some investigating. I'm pretty sure these two drops are going to the first and second floor. It's probably not gonna be one for the basement. All right, folks, we are back. So after turning out these lines, uh, came to a conclusion that this drop right here is actually my drop in the basement. I assumed this one was going to the second and third floor. I didn't know the basement was hooked in already. But... up here finally hopefully you guys can see what's going on i'm here at the tap 
Yeah. So I already know where my wire is. It's right there. This one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one removed. Okay, got my meter into the tap right now. So I'm about to run this signal test real quick. See what kind of levels we get here. Okay. Since we're waiting for the meter, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a uh, correct signal on this line here. Um, a lot of people been commenting under the video saying that I don't check the stinger of the wire or the center, the singer conductor of the cable after I strip it. You guys are right, I don't. I, 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 I don't check the length of the stinger or the length of the copper, I should say, of the coaxial cable. I feel like there's no need to. There's no need to if you know how to properly use a prep tool. So this is the prep tool here that I, I always like to use. I use this prep tool right here. And the reason why I like to use it is because when it comes to putting the wire inside of the prep tool, I like the way it's flush in, inside of that prep tool. Just like that, hopefully you can see that. See how it's nice and flush. It's not, it's not way out here. It's not, you know, short or anything. All right, so this is how I prep my cables. All right, put it inside of the prep tool, nice and flush, nice and flush. When I put my finger on the cable like this, it should be even with the prep tool. If you got a good prep tool, it should be at least no more than seven turns. There it is, just like that. You just fold back your braid, push back the dielectric. Voila, there it is. Not too long, not too short. Just right. That's how I prep my uh, my cable. Some people say that you can use the, uh, the crimp tool, this crimp tool here, to figure out the length of the cable. But like I said, why go through all that? If you know how to prep, properly use the uh, prep tool, you don't have to go through none of that. All you gotta do now is just crimp the connector, the F connector, you want it just like that, nice and flush, crimped. F connector is crimped, so now it's ready to just plug into the tap. Go ahead and check these levels. I'll let you guys know what I get for my upstream, downstream, ingress and all that good stuff, all right? Okay, folks, got that done. Got the F connector hooked in. Um, my RX came in at uh, positive 16. That was really high, that's really high. Um, this drop is not even that far, man. I wanna say it's about 50 foot of cable or less for the drop wires. So I might have to put something in the home to make sure that uh, that downstream's not too high. Yes, voila, wireless XI6 right here. YouTube just got that job finished man it took a while to get this job closed out uh fighting with dispatch and all that stuff but uh we got it closed out uh signals good cpe's passing upstream and downstream um so yeah so now we're on our way to our next <sighs> make it to the job folks um so yeah we got internet issues, connectivity issues. Customers can't connect to the internet. All right, YouTube, located my line. This bad boy right here. Um, go ahead and screw this here. Check it out, see what we get for signal. A lot of techs say uh, it really doesn't matter where these uh, PoE filter goes. Uh, Cause a lot of techs will argue that it's supposed to be at the ground block, it's supposed to be at the main splitter, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be at the tap. Um, but then there are those that say that it doesn't even matter where it goes and can go in. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about the Mocha filters, you know, how you feel about it. Me personally, I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those guys that, yeah, I say they can go anywhere. I mean, I've put them anywhere. I've put them at the tap if I'm working that like underground installs or trouble calls all right folks got it done new fittings new filter 
Um, Downstream came in at 6 dBs. Upstream came in at 35. This customer only has one piece of equipment, which is the XP3 modem. So we're gonna go on ahead and uh, hook it in, see if I see if it needs to be reactivated. And uh, yeah, as always, I'm going to let you know what I get, what's going on with it. So stay tuned. All right, YouTube, that is it. So uh, basically, what I did was um, I thought it was a situation where the modem was going to have to be activated. Uh, which I was trying to do, but for some reason the modem wasn't taking the new password and username and Wi-Fi name that I was trying to create for it. So I went on ahead and swapped the XP3 with the XP6. And uh, yeah, that's it, folks. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode, Life of a Cable Technician. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, this your boy Cable Tech 23. Until next time, folks. Peace.